Today I'm going to be showing you how to get Umbro, which is going to allow you to run your own Bitcoin node on a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using the Argon 1 M2 case. So all the components I have are going to be specific for this case. Now, if you go to the website, I'll have it linked in the description below and scroll through. You can read everything about the website and then you'll get down to a section. This is going to give you step by step instructions on how to install Umbral on a Raspberry Pi. It's going to give you a checklist of everything you need. I will have everything that I specifically used linked in the description. So this case is called the Argon 1 M2. I believe another version called Argon 1 doesn't have this expansion board, which you need the expansion board is in order to have an SSD. I've applied the rubber paddings that come with the case already. The first main step that you're going to do is connect the Argon 1 piece with the Raspberry Pi. And this kind of is hard to do by being gentle. It kind of took me a long time to actually wiggle it in together and get it lined up in place without breaking it because I really wanted to be fragile with this. So once you have everything lined up, the next major piece is going to be the SSD. I will have a link to this specific one in the description. Make sure that it is compatible like this one. You could get a one terabyte if you want, but I would recommend getting a two terabyte just so you have the extra storage if you need it for apps that you're going to be downloading. You might have a lot of space, like if you're doing ordinals and it takes a lot of storage for that. It will slide in pretty easily and then you'll get the screw that has the golden part and screw it into place. Now I'm going to just connect everything together and line it up. This you kind of have to pr put pressure on the left side here where it's kind of like spiky. So each metal thing will slide in the right spot. With the Argon 1 M2 case comes a bag with screws for this part of it you'll be using the shorter screws once everything is screwed in place you don't want to piece it everything you don't want to put the bottom expansion board on quite yet because you need to download the zip file for umbral os if you go towards the step-by-step step, which I referenced before all you have to do is click on the green button and it'll start downloading make sure you save it to a place where you know where it is the next step is going to require you to download Belina Etcher on step 3 you'll see that there's a green button you click it and it'll direct you to the website where you can download Belina Etcher and you'll select your operating system I was using Windows once it is installed, we can go to the next step. This will require you to have a micro SD card and a card reader that will be able to plug into your computer. When you open Bellina Etcher, it'll look something like this. When you press select image, you want to choose the Umbral OS and have it in the unzipped file and make sure that it's going to your micro sd card and it'll take some time but once it's finished that's all the installation stuff you'll have to do the size of the micro sd card should be 16 gigabytes or more i did not have to buy a card reader for my micro sd if you don't have one you could ask your wife's boyfriend and he will probably have one that you can use Going back to the step-by-step -step instructions, you just insert micro SD, use the Belina Etcher to flash the file to your micro SD, and then you can remove your micro SD from your card reader and you could plug it into your Raspberry Pi and then we can finally piece everything together because that's all the internal components that will be necessary. Step seven is to connect to the SSD, which our SSD is connected with this small little connector that comes with the case, so it's not going to look exactly like the picture if you're following the steps. I do recommend to just 
pull up the website, go through all the steps, step by step. It really tells you everything you need. Hopefully this video kind of just gives you a visual of how you got to piece it together. And there are also instructions that come with your M2 and your Raspberry Pi that will kind of help you if you need it. Now everything is pieced together, screwed in, so we can get our power source and our ethernet cable. The power source that we're going to be using is an official Raspberry Pi. I heard that you must use the official one so that it doesn't have any issues with power. There is a black color or a white color. The white one's more expensive though, but I chose it because it was just linked in another video that I saw. Now an ethernet cable, I would first ask your wife's boyfriend if you don't have one. I had one on hand already, so I didn't have to buy an additional one. You might want to consider the length of it, depending on where your power source is or how you want to set up your node, whether it's across the room and you need to plug it in, you might need an 18 footer. To turn on the Raspberry Pi, once it's plugged in, just tap the power button, it'll power up and it'll come on with the light in the back for the Wi-Fi connection and the front will have a red light too. If you don't see either one of these, it could be a faulty cord or your power's not on. So now at step 10, you can just click the link and it'll take you to Umbral Local which you don't have to worry about typing in your Wi-Fi password because Ethernet cable links directly to it and it'll boot up. And the first thing that I would recommend that you do is to start downloading your Bitcoin node because it takes a long time to synchronize. Mine took six days, but I didn't check till the seventh and it was completed. All the links will be in the description. That'll be everything you need. It's not that hard. I know you can do it.